I think we're ready, so thank you very, very much. We have a very diverse group uh, representing this point of view today. We have, uh, as you can see, we have Republicans and Democrats. We have unions and industry. We have safety advocates. We have law enforcement. Uh, and we are united here to stand against legislation which would impose a federal mandate forcing these uh, long twin 33 trucks on our nation's highways. 38 states, including my home state of Mississippi, uh, have considered this issue and have chosen not to allow these twin 33 uh, double trailers on their roads. And so we ask today, in light of what has been proposed in uh, the House and the Senate, why should Washington, D.C. be telling these states that we know better about safety decisions than they do at the local level? And uh, particularly, uh, I, I think it's interesting to ask this question in light of the, the total absence of any hearings on this question. Uh, we haven't had hearings in this Congress or in the previous Congress in the Senate. We haven't had hearings in the House. The Appropriations Committee uh, in, in uh, neither House has had uh, hearings. The uh, Public Works Committee where I serve, the Commerce Committee where I serve, none of us have had any hearings to indicate that this should be done. We have the support here today of a large uh, portion of the trucking industry, and that needs to be emphasized. Uh, the trucking industry uh, plays a key role in our economy. We think they should be listened to. 67% of our nation's freight by weight uh, is, is delivered on trucks. They pay taxes. They pay 30% of, uh, they, they, they pay $30 billion in federal and state highway user tax. Uh, and, and they hire more than one million private fleets. So we're here today uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder with uh, many of our friends in the trucking industry. Small truckers, particularly small businessmen, are very much with us on this issue. We should be careful about saying we are going to run over the opinion of these people and of people in 38 states. Just this past weekend, we gained some more support in our effort to prevent this federal mandate. The Truckload Carriers Association was in Washington. Their board voted almost unanimously to oppose Twin 33s. This was a, a change in their position, which uh, initially had been a position of neutrality on the issue after considering it further they came out almost unanimously in favor of our position not to impose this mandate. Also, I'm pleased to, uh, uh, to thank AAA for being supportive of our efforts and sending a letter saying that they would um, oppose any efforts to put twin 33 trailers on our uh, nation roadways uh, as a federal mandate. So at this opportunity, uh, we will we will hear from uh, a diverse group. Uh, we'll, we will begin with Senator Feinstein, then Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut. Uh, they will be followed by Jackie Gillen for Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety, then by Walter Armstrong, uh, police, police chief of Vicksburg in my own state of Mississippi, by, then by James Hoffa with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters and Dave Heller, Truckload Carriers of America. And so at this point, I will turn the podium over to my colleague, Senator Feinstein. Well, thanks very much, Senator Wicker, and thank you for your leadership in this. Uh, I think it's really important because I think this means loss of life, and I want to thank my colleague, Dick Blumenthal, thank you so much. It's great to be here with you. We stood over there, and we looked at what was more than an eight-story building on wheels. 91 feet to be specific. There's only one inch that could be different because of idiosyncrasies of the coupling. And 
I can say without hesitation that this is one of the worst proposals I've heard in my lifetime of service, of public service. How can Congress pass a law allowing trucks longer than 90 feet when we know that shorter trucks already kill thousands of Americans a year? Data shows that there are around 3,500 fatal injuries each year. In 2013, nearly 4,000 people were killed. 71% of those killed were in other vehicles, and 11% were bicyclists and pedestrians. Yet Congress is considering, without any safety evaluation or study, allowing an even longer and more deadly chain of trucks on our highways. We already know that twin 28-foot trucks have an 11% higher fatal rate than single trailer trucks. Longer trailers will mean even more deaths. We also know that twin 33s swing out four feet wider than twin 28s and require 20 more feet to stop. When I asked the California Department of Transportation whether they support twin 33s, they said they do not support these trucks because of longer passing distances, difficulty merging, ramps, turn lanes, and rest areas that simply are not able to support them. Even our Federal Department of Transportation asked Congress not to pass any law until they can fully study this issue. Instead, this would be a writer on an appropriations bill. And with no discussion by the Commerce Committee, no real discussion by the Appropriations Committee. It is one huge mistake and I, along with my colleagues, will do everything we can to prevent this from happening. Thank you. And now my friend and colleague, Senator Green. Thank you. Thanks to Senator Feinstein for her great leadership and Senator Wicker, thank you for bringing us together today. Uh, and I want to thank particularly the representatives of small business, law enforcement, uh, public advocates for safety, and my great friend, uh, Mr. Hoffer from the Teamsters, who are truly champions of safety and small business. Uh, this drive for Twin 33s really is Washington at its worst. A secret, special interest effort at the expense of ordinary Americans, our children, and our family who are on the roads right now and whose lives will be put at greater risk because of these deadly doubles. These huge behemoths are literally an assault on drivers. Deadly doubles are potentially much more dangerous than the existing trucks on the roads. And already, 4,000 deaths every year and the result of truck accidents and crashes, and 500 of them are truckers, the drivers of those trucks themselves. So from the array of interests represented here, you might ask, who is behind this effort? And the answer is the big trucking companies, special interests who very simply want to divert more traffic to trucks, not fewer trucks on the road, and who care less about safety and small business than they do about their own bottom lines. That's why it's Washington at its worst, because the special interests are the ones driving this effort to increase the permissible size of trucks. And what they want to do is override state laws from the public advocates of safety, ordinary drivers, legislators, governors, who are closest to the people they represent and who reflect the increasing interest in safety on our roads. We should not be increasing 
the size of these trucks and putting drivers at greater risk, in effect assaulting their safety simply to increase the profits of those big trucking companies. So I'm here proudly with these advocates to say that we are determined to fight this effort behind deadly doubles, which are more difficult to drive, more dangerous to stop, and much more deadly when involved in crashes of any kind. They are bigger, and they potentially will simply kill more people, and that's why we are determined on a bipartisan basis, and we have other colleagues who are supporting us, but this bipartisan group, I think, reflects the will of the American people, as well as public safety. And I'm very pleased to introduce now Jackie uh, Gillian from the Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, I am Jackie Gillian. I'm president of Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety, and we are a coalition of the leading consumer health and safety groups and insurance companies working to reduce crashes and save lives. Uh, we are so happy to be here participating in this press conference today, and I want to thank Senator Wicker, Senator Feinstein, and Senator Blumenthal for their leadership. The safety community is unanimous. We are behind you, and we will do everything we can to stop this piece of legislation mandating double 33s from being enacted into law. As Senator Feinstein says, big trucks are a big safety problem. Bigger trucks are even a bigger safety problem. And right now, special interests are, have attached this provision mandating double 33s on appropriations bill. They are rejecting research that shows that these trucks are dangerous. They're trying to overturn laws in 38 states. And they're also completely ignoring public opinion. Public opinion polls show consistently that the public does not want trucks to get bigger and longer and heavier. Basically, nobody wants these trucks. Safety groups, truck drivers, AAA, law enforcement, trucking companies, the truck crash victims and survivors, as well as the Department of Transportation and elected officials across the country. Many states have had elected officials send letters and pass resolutions saying we don't want them in our state. Senator Feinstein talked about the number of people that are killed yearly in truck crashes, about 4,000 and 100,000 people injured. Those figures are going up. They are not going down at all. And before today is over, 11 people in the United States will die in a crash involving a big truck. And over 275 will be injured. This past weekend, I participated in a conference sponsored by the Truck Safety Coalition called Sorrow to Strength. 65 families from across the country, not paid lobbyists, on their own dime, took time off from work to come to Washington, D.C and to go to the Hill and talk with members to say, we don't want these trucks, and to share their own emotional stories and the economic impacts of these large truck crashes. Three of those people that participated in this conference had had loved ones killed in crashes involving FedEx double 28s. One woman lost her mother and her stepdad. I also had the privilege of spending time with two wonderful young people, Santiago Calderon and Michelle Lemus, who were on that bus in Orland, California, on their way to a college visit that was hit by a FedEx Double 28 uh, truck. Ten people were killed, and most everybody on that bus suffered injuries. With truck crash deaths and injuries on the rise, now is not the time to sacrifice safety. We need to think of ways to advance safety. And I also want to commend the Truckload Carriers Association for taking that position of opposing it, the Trucking Alliance, and other responsible trucking companies that are standing up for safety and agree that longer double trailers are bad for the motoring public, bad for their drivers, and bad for safety. Just look at that massive truck back there. Do you feel comfortable driving with your family next to a truck that size? 
where it's going to take you longer to pass that truck. The back trailers may sway into your lane. I mean, these trucks are really dangerous, and we have to acknowledge that there are a lot of people sharing the road, a lot of families that are dying out there in truck crashes. We need to put the brakes on this proposal, because if we don't, the American public are going to pay with their lives and their wallets for this assault on safety. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce Walter Armstrong, Police Chief of Dixburg, Mississippi. Good morning, and thank all of you for coming out this morning for this very important public safety, highway safety issue. I'm Walter Armstrong. I'm the Chief of Police for the city of Vicksburg, Mississippi. I have served as Chief of Vicksburg for over six and a half years, and today I'm speaking on behalf of the Mississippi Association of Chiefs of Police. I also served as a Mississippi State Trooper for over 25 years. As police chief and as a retired state trooper, I am sworn to protect and serve the public. My fellow law enforcement officer and I strongly oppose bigger tractor trailer truck, like the extra long double trailer truck you see here today. <coughs> These extra long rigs would pose dangerous situations for motors across this country. In my years of patrolling the Mississippi highways, I have responded to more than 50 crashes involving the big rigs. Trucks with longer double trailers would make our roads dangerous. It is just that simple. The most important factor in a truck crash is stopping distance. Trucks operating today can take nearly the length of a football field to stop. If Congress make these double trailer trucks longer, they would take even longer to stop. In fact, the United States Department of Transportation found that they, they, they would take 22 feet longer to stop than the trucks on the road today. I have been at the scene of many crashes, and that extra 22 feet can mean the difference between life and death. Many of our nation's roads have short or no merging lanes, which means it would be harder for those long trucks to merge safely with other traffic. The extra link also means that passing become more difficult, and especially on wet roads. Motors would be exposed to increased splash and sprays that come from underneath the truck and around the truck during bad weather. And finally, if there is a crash, the longer double will have a larger crash footprint, increasing the risk for more deaths and injuries on our roads. Here's a key point for Congress to consider. No trucks start or stops on our interstates. These longer double trailer trucks will find their way onto roads that wind through our local communities. These are the local roads that the trucks use to pick up and drop off their goods. And these also the same roads that constituents drive to work, to school, and back home. A delivery arriving a day early is not worth one life, not in Vicksburg, not in Mississippi, and not here in our nation capital. Law enforcement is also concerned about the state of our nation infrastructure affecting highway safety. Bridges are in disrepair, roads are in very poor condition. Long double trailer trucks will make our current infrastructure problem worse and further endanger the motors. So member of Congress, I ask you to please stand with law enforcement officers from across this nation and keeping our community safe and keeping these big trucks off our roadways. Well, thank you all for coming today. It's uh, great to, uh, to be here to talking about an important issue. 
Uh, you know, Senator Blumenthal used the word deadly doubles. We're looking at deadly doubles. Uh, we have a real problem here with the legislation that's pending. I represent more than 1.4 million Teamsters uh, throughout the United States and Canada. Over half of our members turn a key every day and drive a truck. So we have a fundamental interest in the safety of our highways and the safety of our members and the driving public. Uh, this is something that both Republicans and Democrats can agree on. This is something we have to address. But what is happening here is being slipped into bills uh, as the new way here in Congress is to bring in huge bills this high and bury it somewhere and then say, well, we have to get this passed, whether it's the highway bill, whether it's the infrastructure bill, and bury it somewhere. And it's great that we're having this uh, press conference today to draw attention to the fact that they want to increase the length of the deadly doubles from 28 feet to 33 feet. Well, that is the worst idea I've ever heard. You know, as other people have said, it's obvious today with the safety problems we have on our highways, the fact that we have a crumbling infrastructure, that we have basically roads and highways that are falling apart, that we have roads that were designed years ago, exit ramps and entrance ramps. Can you imagine pulling that big rig off the highway on something that was built 30 years ago, whether it's a ramp to come on or to come off? We really are not up to date for these larger rigs that are coming on. And the safety issue is such a tremendous issue. We all drive cars. Almost everybody here has a car. We're used to seeing what happens on the highway. Uh, I recently drove where there are doubles, a 28-foot doubles on the Ohio Turnpike. What did I see? I see people driving next to these rigs, endangering themselves, endangering the driver, and drive, endangering the public because they don't know how to deal with these big rigs. And the answer is it's bad for the driver, too. The driver has a harder time. I talk to our drivers that drive the 28-foot doubles on the Ohio Turnpike and the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And I think they know and tell me how dangerous it is. And when you get into bad weather, it's the same thing. I have seen many, many trucks basically turned over in the ditch, 28-foot doubles on their side. Can you imagine 33-foot doubles? So this is an issue we can all be concerned about. It's basically a safety issue. It's an infrastructure issue. It's an issue that concerns every American here. So what we've got to do now is put the brakes on the doubles. Let's do it together. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Senator Wicker, Senator Feinstein, and Senator Blumenthal for your leadership on this issue. My name is David Heller. I'm here representing the Truckload Carriers Association, or TCA. TCA represents nearly 700 companies working and serving in the truckload freight industry. Our member companies share the concerns that others here have voiced about the impact of this legislation on motor safety and highway infrastructure. We are particularly concerned about the impact this legislation will have on all truckload carriers and the several hundred thousand people our member companies employ across the U.S. and Canada. If this language becomes law, there will be enormous pressure on truckload carriers to switch to twin 33-foot trailers as opposed to our 28-foot trailers that currently are mandated in, by law. Such a shift would be disastrous for many truckload carriers. Many of our member companies simply cannot afford the double 33-foot trailers. We're also concerned about the increased potential for driver injuries associated with longer trucks. Operating and assembling a tractor trailer is physically demanding work. The strain of this work increases greatly with the size of the truck. Although our drivers have weathered many changes over the years, requiring them to break up 91-foot trucks four times on each load and manhandle a 3,000-pound converter gear is simply too much to ask. As our workforce ages, the last thing we can afford as an industry is a setback to our efforts to improve the job and enhance our drivers' quality of life. At a minimum, there has not been sufficient dialogue around this language to understand its full impact. For these reasons, the Truckload Carriers Association is proud to stand with you, Senator Wicker, Senator Feinstein, and Senator Blumenthal, in urging Congress to oppose any legislation with provisions related to nationwide changes in truck size. Thank you again for your leadership. And, and thank you all for your excellent points. I mentioned when I began that this is a bipartisan effort to oppose this federal mandate. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to uh, also observe that this press conference is now a bicameral event, and uh, Representative John Garamendi has joined us from California. John, would you like to come forward and, and take a moment? I certainly would. 
not because I want to talk, but because I know this is a serious problem. Two days ago, as I went to the Sacramento airport, I pulled off Liberty Road onto Highway 99, a very, very short on-ramp. And the, not the double 31s, but the double 28s. I found myself almost in the ditch trying to get on. It would have been impossible if the double 31s were in place. This is a serious issue. Mr. Hoffa hit this right on the head. This kind of legislation can never make it in the full light of day. It's only going to make it in the hidden writing up of a very massive transportation bill with the House of Representatives are going to do tomorrow. Many of us, and I'll be there watching closely to make sure that this kind of double 31s never makes it into that legislation. It has to stop right now in the full light of day in the bright sunshine of Washington, D.C. The public will not allow this to happen, and we're going to do everything we can in the House of Representatives to follow the lead of these senators as they lead us towards a more safe highway system. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Garibandi, and thank you all for making uh, such excellent points. You've been very patient, but uh, we have time for some questions. If you have any questions for any one of these people who have spoken today, any questions at all? Yes, sir. What companies are, are pushing this? Uh, perhaps. Uh, All right. They've been in to see you, FedEx and the UPS have been in to see Well, uh, you. Well, I've spoken to people on uh, both sides of this issue, and uh, sometimes you have to uh, you have to take a position uh, in, in favor of the people, even if it, it involves uh, telling some friends that you can't help them this time. And, th and we're here today about safety. Yes. Perhaps Representative Garamendi uh, might be able to speak to that. Now, those of you that are watching the House of Representatives would probably be better off watching the Senate because our bill just came out a couple of days ago. Uh, we don't think this is in the bill as it is today, but we know that there are very powerful forces that want to see double 31s, and we fully expect to see an amendment, uh, either uh, perhaps even a manager's amendment. We'll see what happens, but we're watching. We don't want it. Where do you think the committee is? There's only one way to find out. Pay attention. Well, uh, I tell you what we're concerned about it is uh, is what several people have mentioned. We're concerned about the uh, provision added to the appropriations bill, and it's important that that provision be be, be taken out of any appropriation bill as it goes forward. Uh, I can say this: uh, I've I've spoken to the leadership in the Senate about this issue. Uh, Senator Feinstein and I have made a strong case both to uh, Senator McConnell and Senator Reid. And, and to his credit, Senator McConnell has assured me that I will get a vote in the United States Senate one way or the other on this issue. The senators will speak before this is added to a bill that goes to the President of the United States. And I appreciate the fact that we'll get a chance for the elected senators of the 50 states to speak and to demonstrate to their constituents how they feel about this issue. That's why this press conference is so important. Uh, we really do try to respond to what our constituents tell us, and I'm hoping that word, the word will go out from uh, the information we've given today, from the visual information that you have before you and the impact uh, in real life on, on uh, safety concerns, that the American people will rise up and say, Take this out. Uh, uh, let's deal with this when, when we have uh, better safety information. But uh, take it out of the appropriation bill and don't send that on to the president. And I think, um, you know, this, this morning uh, we are sending a shot across the bow for the hood, if you like, that the world is watching. We're not going to allow this kind of process to operate in secret with riders offered in the recesses of committee private meetings and then brought to the floor as a package that can't be challenged because it's part of an essential bill. We're going to be watching, America should be watching, and the world ought to be paying attention to what's happening. 
Search Feinstein. Yeah, uh, I can give you the status of the appropriations process in the Senate. Uh, it was offered, an amendment was offered on the floor. I offered a counter amendment. I lost. And um, in the committee, uh, what did I say? On the floor, in the committee, I lost. And so it's in the bill. So we have to watch carefully for that and get it out of the bill on the floor of the Senate if that bill comes to the floor. And um, as I recall, it was uh, a one bill. Yeah, one bill twelve. Very close to the other. So thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. We'll be in the area.